Welcome to The Warehouse. Have you ever heard a sermon and thought, how in the world did he discover that? Or where did he get that idea? Every week at Cornerstone Church, two teams dig into the biblical text that will be taught during our weekend services. We spend hours talking about the text, the context, the culture of the time, you name it. But you can't stuff all that into a 30-minute message. That's where we come in. We're going to show you the stuff in the warehouse that didn't make it to the stage. Hey, Stephanie. Yeah. <laughs> Your kids have brought home their Halloween candy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, they have now gone to bed. Mm-hmm. You're looking to pirate some of that candy. Right, what right, are you right. hoping is in that bag? So I don't wait until they go to bed. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I do it in front of them. Wow. So they know Holy cow. what I need and want out of their bag. So I have actually trained my children when I when they get Sour Patch Kids mm-hmm. or Twizzlers, they're handing them over. Yep. Sour Patch Kids, like the crazy sour ones? Oh, yeah. The yeah. sourer, the better? Yeah. More sour? Sourer. More sour. Sourer. I, I sourer. don't know. I don't sourer-est. know which one I would. Nope. The sourest? Hmm. You guys figure that out. Them all. But that, that one was sourer than the first. That one was more sour. I would say more sour. Probably. Sour or sour. Okay. Anyways, good job, guys. Figuring that out. Um, but yeah, that's... that's you ca- sour Patch Kids. Mm-hmm. One. Twizzlers, two. Either. I, I would take either. All right. It depends on the mood. All right. Yeah. I, mean, I would... Five bags of candy to pick from. <laughs> what are you hoping's in that bag? I feel like this is going to be like what I anticipate is most parents' answer. Like anything chocolate. Oh. Mm. Mm. No, 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 you can't. But that's too broad. Uh, too broad? Yeah. yeah. I really like Snickers bars. Um, I also like Butterfingers. Do you like Almond Joys? I actually do like Almond oh, Joys. Oh, no, they're great. It's coconut and almond? Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, what's your preferred method of eating a Snickers? Just what take is, a bite? Is there... Well, so if it's in a kid's bag, it's the fun size. Mm-hmm. I would do... I, I like to savor it. Cause I'm, I try to be careful not like to not just pig out on it mm-hmm, or whatever. Mm-hmm, so it's mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. savoring it. I would take small bites mm-hmm. of, of it. Have you ever given a Snickers the Kit Kat treatment? Break it in half? Eat the top nougaty peanut section first. And then, wait, no, I'm sorry. Caramely peanut section first. Then the bottom nougaty section. How is that the Kit Kat treatment? Because well, <laughs> you eat Kit Kat in layers. No, you do not. Sure. I've done that, yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. I. You mm. like, and yeah. then. Yeah, people of class <laughs> eat Kit Kats in layers. Yeah, okay. or. Yeah, okay. like, or exactly like that visual <laughs> example in an audio, <laughs> in an audio <laughs> format. You're welcome, <laughs> listeners. Uh, so Snickers, number one. Yeah, I also like, just very practically, I will take out all the black licorice. <laughs> I mean, because I love black licorice oh. and most other people do not. So it's like, and which do I pe- guess. Do, mo- hold on, hold on. Okay, do people even right. give. Black Probably licorice not. anymore. Probably like, not. People have realized this is something I children mean, do not people enjoy. Who, people who hate kids give black licorice out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And like they're the same people who do the apples with needles in them. I think. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Yeah. Black those, licorice. Those are second favorite. I can't believe you came out as a black licorice enjoyer. I I like it. Yeah. You just had always a dozen have. people. Hold on, my hold on. mom does as well. Do you use like, so with Twizzlers, you uh-huh. can put like your Twizzler into a, sh- like as a straw and use it as a straw I've and drink? I've never used black licorice as a straw for something. <laughs> nope. Um, if you're also revolted by that, email us. Yeah. With the straw I, or the I black do, licorice? The black licorice. Okay. I also like, I mean, so good and plenty, which is black licorice with candy on the outside would be a favorite like snack and candy for me. Whoa. Man. Whew. Let's, let me try to redeem that. Um, I go for whatever is the sour thing. Hey, so I'm a Jolly Rancher guy. Yep, Jolly Rancher is a good staple, but usually, uh, red, green, and then anything else. Interesting. I would go blue raspberry first. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I'm a mm-hmm. grape. I like really. Yeah, I'm yeah. a grape last kind of guy. Oh well. Hmm. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, Jolly Rancher. I like you know. Oh man, like the Warheads. Lemon heads. Oh, mm-hmm. I always loved a good lemon Ooh, head. Ooh, the other day we found three. So we, we had candy at home and we had three warheads. So we had Ooh, each ho, ho, ho. child put a yeah, warhead yeah, 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 in their yeah. mouth and see who could keep it in their mouth the longest. And? 
Um, oh, man, who was it that one? I think Bennett. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Bring it at home. Um, awesome. Now I'm thinking about sour candies. Is it hurting your jaw and yet? And may not be able to. That's an interesting. I don't. Wh- do you know physiologically why that happens? I do not. I don't. Okay. It's, it's a Pavlovian thing for sure. Mm. Yeah. You know Pavlovian? I do. Does the name Pavlov ring a bell? Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> that was good. That was good. <laughs> hey, speaking of slobbering. No. No. Yes. Again. no. We're in week four. Fear. Week four of our series on worship as we're jumping into this idea of follow. Mm-hmm. We're going to be in Colossians chapter 3, verses 16, on into chapter 4, verse 1. Mm-hmm. Interesting. We Most of us, when we read, this is what we're going to study, I even sent Stephanie a Slack and said, are you sure this was the one he meant to give you? <laughs> yeah. Because we're here in this worship series, mm-hmm. and it's it it doesn't uh, at first come off like a worship series Ooh. text. Did you get there by the end? Yes, I sure yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, pretty early on in the in the meeting, especially in the yeah. meeting or while studying in right. the meeting. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, Colossians three sixteen to four one. Stephanie, what was your big idea? All of life is worship. Period. There it is. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Period. Full stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, you, you're gonna add some Maybe exclamation an, point. Yeah. Ah. I was like, do we want to make this excited? Like, yeah. Yeah. Or, or like, all of life is worship. No, that's yeah. too much. Shouting. Ah, so not two exclamation points. Right. I got you. I never use two exclamation points. It's one, three, or five. Ooh. I don't know. Fun fact about Nathan. Yeah. Yeah. I know you all cared. Man. Hey, what was your big idea? We worship Christ by submitting to God's ordained structure. Hey, Jay, what's yours? Hey, I said the word dwelling in us expands our worship oh yeah and if you can see jay whenever he you can't. talks about it i know they can't but we can so i feel like we have to explain what he's doing okay. with his hands yeah so maybe it's not, you, ex- you it's not this it's that right it's, it's that so expanding like ex- <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like in like like land you know like uh if you're if you're you put the wrong kind of soap in your dishwasher. Like mm-hmm. you put your laundry soap it in your dishwasher. Out. It spills out. It covers the, it expands on the floor that yeah. way, right? So it's going horizontally <laughs> across the floor. Like geographically expanding. Not I like, like it. not like a helium balloon popping and filling oh. the air expanding. Okay, you know? look at you. Good job. That was great. You did, you did fantastic. Thanks. So it expands our worship. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. What kind of context do we have for this? So we're in Colossians. I got pointed at. I'm going to I'm going to talk. Ooh, Normally I do the pointing. Yeah. Today. Well, she's the pointy, well, come not on. the pointer. Right. Come on with it, pointy. So, the book of Colossians was likely written between 58 to 62 AD. Um so Paul wrote this letter during one of his many imprisonments for, um for announcing Jesus as the risen Lord. One of his many Imprisonments or many imprisonments? <laughs> not many. It was not in like a weekend. Like a, <laughs> like multiple. Ah. There it is. Um, and we see that at the end of chapter four when he signs his name that it was him. And so it's addressed to a group of people that Paul had never met. And this is actually a church that he did not plant himself, which I yeah. think is neat. Yeah, this he wrote... To this church that he hadn't planted, and he wrote to the Roman church that he hadn't planted yeah. or visited yet. Mm-hmm. And this is also most likely the smallest city to receive a letter from Ooh. Paul. I saw that it was small. Did you guys see anything about like how small? How I many did people? Not. Okay, I didn't. I, I didn't see how small. So small that they didn't even care to count them. Ooh, oh wow! Wow. I grew up in a town like that. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Super judgy was, over there. Yeah, that was pretty <laughs> dismissing. Whatever. Yeah. Dismissing. Okay, Dis- so this is this would be, I think they call it, uh, I brought this up yesterday. I think they call it an occasional letter, which means that it was like there, there was something um, going on. That, yeah. So a letter of occasion. Right. Like there was an occasion that prompted the letter. Right. Like somebody um, getting married? What? 
<laughs> yeah, I, so an occasional I mean, card would be, hey, not just, hey, how's it going? I was thinking about you, but you're getting married. Right. Here's a card. Congratulations. Yes. So not occasional and they're like, hey, it happens sporadically yeah. or whatever, but occasional meaning that there was an occasion that prompted this. And so the occasion for Colossians seems to be this false teaching that's happening in the church in Colossae. How do you say Colossae? Just like you did. Colossae I say col- I or say Colossae? Colossae. I go Colossae. Colossae. Okay. I, yeah, I hit the ah, uh, that Colossae. Yeah. Uh, a couple of people yesterday were saying Colossae. Okay. And you said. There's probably Colossae. a right way. What? Now you guys messed me up. Colossae. No, Colossae. 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 That's how you say it. Not like not, that. Not French. Colossae. Okay. Um, there's a. We win. There's a. Yeah, there is. There's a heresy um, that's starting to take root in the church, not in the in church, they, not, not in the way that we're saying yeah. the word Colossi, although it's bordering on it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so if you look through, if you read chapter two, like um, Paul is like coming out hard against this, uh, against this heresy and condemning it as philosophy. Um, it's empty. It's uh, deceitful. Um, and it's, it's interesting because um, there's actually a lot of debate about w- the exact nature of this heresy. Mm. There's some, there's some places that we can tell for sure that it was like Judaizers or whatever, um, or that it's like an early form of Gnosticism, but there's uh, just judging by like the things that Paul comes out against in uh, chapter two, it's really hard to tell exactly what the heresy was. So there was a plethora of things that he's like, yeah, fix. So it's funny, like if you read, you can read great scholarly articles that would all make cases for like one thing or another. So some would just call it like straight, um, straight Judaism mm. uh, as an as the issue, because there's mention of circumcision specifically of festivals and new moons yeah. of celebrating particular days. Um, and so uh, some would say just like straight Judaism. Some would say that it was like paganism. So the like worshiping, of, you know, multiple gods. Um, some, uh, would start to try to, com- uh, say like Gnosticism. So, uh, a, a pursuit of an enlightenment kind of knowledge, mm. um, and a separation of like the, the body versus the spirit, um, and kind of tied into that would be asceticism, which is the, like, um, like everything of the flesh is bad. So you need to, um, he even calls that out of like, Hey, um, you are, you know, uh, saying don't you're saying don't eat this don't touch that don't look at that don't do this um which is very mm. ascetic and so is and so that's related to so we were talking about pathways of worship uh-huh. and and ascetic yeah. the definition was simple solitude yes. yep. uh, mm-hmm. so that same issue like yeah physical comfort yeah mm. yep mm. um so wh- whatever the exact nature of it was, it's it's most likely a kind of a combination of all these things or a unique blend um, that it definitely has Jewish elements, um, definitely has like elements of like um, asceticism in there. Um, and so seems to be kind of an interesting blend of heresy. Mm. But anyway, so then the the big point of Colossians, that's why like Paul makes such a big deal about Jesus. Mm-hmm. He shows that... Um, any of these traditions that they're holding to, that those were but a shadow, Mm -hmm. but Christ is the substance. And Mm -hmm. I love that, that terminology, um, shadows are like caused by something else. They are not, they don't have any substance in themselves. Um, and they're like, uh, ephemeral, like they, they, again, they have no substance in themselves. So you can't grab onto a shadow. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas Christ has substance. Mm -hmm. So he does a lot. This has the, um, famous, Christ poem in chapter one that just Mm -hmm. makes a whole lot. That might be my favorite section in the New Testament. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, I was thinking, so Philippians, my favorite book, Mm -hmm. but this might be my favorite section. Colossians Mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a good one. Uh, So, so uh, there are like 38, I was trying to find the list of them that I saw yesterday, but I couldn't find it, but there are 38 Hapax Legomena Mm. in Colossians. Second only Whoa. to Philippians, who has like fifty-eight or sixty some odd. Um, and uh, again, Hapax Legomenon is some is a word Dude. in the Greek. I know. I was waiting for him I'm to sorry. do it in a. By uh, and itself. of course, Hapax Legomenon 
is a word in the Greek that's only found once in that in that entire uh, New Testament. So, uh, thirty eight of them in Colossians, like fifty or si- or sixty some odd in Philippians. Nice, hmm. cool. Yeah, cool stuff, bro. Uh, thanks, sis. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Anything else context wise? We talked a little bit about Colossi. Yeah, when we were talking about the Revelation series, because mm-hmm. it was just about 12 miles from mm-hmm. Laodicea, Laodicea, the church that was lukewarm, and it's about 14 miles from the city of Hierapolis, and we talked about Laodicea being called lukewarm because they piped in their water from one of the uh, the other towns. Mm-hmm. Hierapolis, known for its hot springs, uh, Colossi, known for the cool springs that came down from the mountain after the snow melted. Mm-hmm. We might have just had an earthquake. Uh, so do you remember that earthquake two weeks ago, guys? <laughs> nope. Um, Somebody walking on the roof. Same difference. Santa. <laughs> 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 hey, I, know, I know him. <laughs> yeah, let's change and release this in December. Yes. Anything else yes. context-wise? Uh, I think something... So I think it's interesting that Paul doesn't just like correct their bad practices, but he starts with correcting mm. their bad theology. Mm-hmm. And he mm-hmm. also like prevents them from just a step. He doesn't just say, Hey, you guys are doing this instead do this. He's not trying to like, he doesn't want them to create a new kind of legalism, mm. which mm-hmm. I think is important. Even as we're in a series about um, spiritual disciplines and practices, we're not just saying like, Hey, get rid of your old kind of like religious mm-hmm. practices and incorporate a new kind of religious practices. Cause mm. these are better and upgraded. Um, he instead says uh, to them that they are to, uh, seek the things uh, from above. So if if then you've been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things that are above, not on the things that are on earth. Mm-hmm. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is your life appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. And so it's very much rooted in the fact that like, hey, you've been transformed. Mm-hmm. This is not stuff that you should do to be transformed, um, but you have been. And so you live from a place of gratitude for that because you're a new person. Mm-hmm. And so let's talk about what it looks like to live that new kind of life. Mm. And so as we read these, we're not just establishing new rules and regulations to be made right with God, yeah. but these are our response to mm-hmm. what God's done. Mm. Boy, that's good. That is good. Well, let's jump in. Colossians 3, 16. Let's go 16 and 17 first. Shall we? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Are we reading it? We're back oh. to a passage that could be read. Aw. Let me read. Okay. I think, I'll let you read. Yeah. And I'm I'm going to be able to read and not cough up half a lung. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him. What you got? So I had for the word of Christ there in verse 16, that it probably refers to the teaching about Christ as well as like his own words. Mm -hmm. Um, Both were a part of the oral tradition at that time. And so it would have been passed down to early believers. So word of Christ could either mean like the gospel or it could mean words that he said himself. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they wouldn't have automatically thought Bible because mm-hmm. they were holding holding the Bible as letters from mm-hmm. this guy and then right. sending it on to the next and sharing mm-hmm. it with others. And... Yeah, and we, we talked about like this is the, we said this is the only place that word of Christ is used in right. the, um, I... the, that this Greek phrase word of Christ is used. There's another place where um, it uses a different Greek word for word, um, rhema versus logos. Yeah. Um, but this is... So I don't know what the um, phrase equivalent is of hypox legomena, but mm-hmm. um, it is one of those as a phrase. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought it was, we didn't really talk about this. This is just kind of like a little interesting um, Greek thing, but um, the word let at the beginning of 16 is not actually, it's not present in the text. Um, if you just look at it, it's implied by the tense of the verb dwell. Mm-hmm. So it's just kind of interesting because I'm like, what's that word let? And is yeah, it yeah. plural or singular and stuff? And I want to click on it and it's not there. Um, but it points forward to the the dwell. So it's still that idea. Of yeah. This is kind of a passive thing you're doing. You're opening the door. Right. So that the word of Christ can come in. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Which 
dwell there actually can represent like a divine presence, the presence like so which dwelt in the tabernacle um, and the first temple at the time. So like thinking of us being that, Mm -hmm. that's what's dwelling Mm -hmm. inside of us. Oh, yeah. And how when the ark was taken into battle, that was called the tent of meeting Mm -hmm. because tabernacle had that Mm -hmm. idea of being dwelt in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Yeah, I talked yesterday. I just got caught there for a while, richly. Mm -hmm. This idea of abundance, uh, copiously. Yeah, you guys said that word a lot yesterday. It's a good word. Yeah, we use it a copious amount of times. Uh, uh, (laughs) And uh, so it tied uh, also, Paul also uses the word in Titus 3, 4 through 6, when he says, but when the goodness and loving kindness of God, our Savior, appeared... He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly mm-hmm. through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Mm-hmm. And so that, that's that same, that same picture, that same idea that the Holy Spirit has been poured out richly, abundantly, copiously mm-hmm. onto us is the same way we're supposed to let the word of Christ in uh, teaching and admonishing singing, uh, all, all the things that follow starts with us letting the word of Christ dwell in us mm-hmm. richly. Mm-hmm. Ooh. So one of the things we talked about was, um, so the you there is plural rather than singular. Mm-hmm. So this is a y'all. Yep. I so, was going to read it y'all and I yep. didn't. <laughs> um, so when are we read this, it's not uh, just on an individual basis. I should, I'm not just waking up in the morning and saying like, how do I let the word of Christ dwell in me richly? Mm today. Um, although it's, I mean, it's not a wrong thing to think, but we, yes. And yeah, we tend to be very individualistic. We read things like our, our default is to read things individualistically in a Western culture. And Mm. that's not how they would have thought of it at all. Um, so this is written to a group of people, a group of believers saying, let the word of Christ dwell in y'all, uh, richly. Um, I think it's, I think it's kind of cool that here you've got the let dwell, is passive. It's like, there's nothing. So these things are not forcing the word of Christ to dwell in us. Yeah. They're not forcing the gospel into our hearts and stuff. Um, it's a passive, like opening up and how do we open ourselves up to that mm. uh, by teaching and admonishing and singing? Mm. Um, yeah. It's not a mantra that we're trying to force in yeah. and like take a crowbar and, and mm-hmm. get it in there. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I just think again, like, <laughs> still in the context of like spiritual disciplines, that's exactly what we're doing. Mm. Our spiritual disciplines are not like making us more spiritually mature and mm-hmm. stuff. They are the the wires that are connecting us to the power source. They're the the cup mm. that we're bending down and getting a drink of water with. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I yeah. it's cool. So it's 26 hours since we really started talking about mm-hmm. this verse. And I've, I have been thinking about just this opening phrase um, the entire time mm. and how I don't, I honestly don't know if I've ever consistently let the word of Christ dwell in me richly. Mm. Um, I, I don't think I have. I've checked the box mm-hmm. and I've opened my app for my daily reading and I've, you, I enjoy studying for this, mm-hmm. and, but I don't think that I let the word dwell richly. Like Mm -hmm. those, those three ideas, letting, being passive and just letting it wash over Mm -hmm. dwell. I don't think I'm a person who has historically just let it dwell and ruminate on it. Mm -hmm. I'll have a song in my head that, that is caught in there all day. Mm -hmm. But that thing I read this morning, I'm not, it's not Mm -hmm. bouncing around my head. Mm -hmm. Then richly, I, I I haven't done it. Mm -hmm. And that it was just one of those, one of those moments, like, that it just hit me when we were we were meeting and like the rest of the rest of the day last night this morning uh this afternoon just been thinking about that idea that holy cow mm-hmm. um and how um how and how my worship over the years has been affected by that very thing that mm-hmm. that like entering into like a sun, a sunday morning needing to get the the battery going uh because the word hasn't been dwelling richly Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just kind of needs a jump start Mm -hmm. um, most weeks Mm -hmm. and and man i don't think i'm alone Mm -hmm. yeah no yeah i think it's 
So one thing that's interesting, just structurally, like grammatically, so we have let the word of Christ, so let dwell is the imperative um, yeah. in this, it's the verb, and then teaching, admonishing, and singing are our, are all uh, participles, so they're modifying that verb, uh, which let us know, that. It, so it's similar to like when you have the Great Commission, right, where you've got um, yeah, yeah. go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, teaching them to observe, um, all that I've commanded. Yeah. And so you have, um, those are participles that explain like, what does he mean when he says make disciples? Yeah. So again, we should see teaching and monitoring and singing as like, what does it mean to let the word of Christ Mm -hmm. dwell in you richly? Mm -hmm. How do we do that? Mm -hmm. By teaching one another, admonishing one another and singing Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to one another. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And Michael talked that 16 and 17, this is the indicative. Uh, so we talk about, uh, 17, that's a subjunct, yeah, a subjunctive he talked about that, that even verse 17 is linked in up here mm-hmm. to verse 16 as well. So even as we get into 17, it's still connected there. And, and my entire life, I don't think I've ever heard a connection between mm-hmm. 16 and 17. Well, I hear mm-hmm. 17 all the time, see it on mm-hmm. shirts. Uh, it's all, all it's poster signs all over. But even that is hooked back mm-hmm. into letting the word of Christ dwell in us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anything else from 16? Uh, what you got? Or 17? 16. Um, so like singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. So that was actually like one of the ways that, of teaching and admonishing. Um, so how it's like, if we're looking back at this time, everything mm-hmm. was done by saying out mm-hmm. loud and stuff. So it wasn't uncommon for them to sing the things that they're learning. And I think you brought up like Shane and Shane yesterday in the Mm -hmm. hymns and Psalms album, Mm -hmm. like how you can listen to that and be able to close your Bible because you've listened to those songs and you now have like that scripture Mm -hmm. memorized. And that's still true to us today. Like where if you put a song to something, you can memorize it Mm -hmm. easier. And so that album, they're taking like Psalm 120 yep. and just putting the psalm to music. Mm-hmm. And yep. so it's this, it's the psalm that we would read, mm-hmm. but it's made yes. into a song. Yeah. So it's, it's one like if I'm, it's if the I'm, song that's made into a song. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like, if I'm reading through the book of Psalms and I come across one of them that they've done the song for, like, as soon as I read the opening line, it's, I hear the, that opening guitar, like, and like, I'm just reading and singing it while mm-hmm. I'm going. And yeah. It's yeah. funny what music, the way music helps. Yeah. What a gift that is. Sink in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then thankfulness there in verse 16 as well. So that's a posture for God. Like, thank you. Um, it's celebrating what a God has done. Um, it's not searching for God's approval. Mm. It's not something you have to earn. It's something that he has gifted us with. Mm-hmm. And so we should be thankful for that in our hearts. Good. Yeah. <laughs> that was a, that was a pretty forceful, good. Yeah, I it, it, I didn't. What mean struck for it to you be. about that? <laughs> no, I just that was something new to me as we were talking. I had never thought about like thankfulness is always kind of one of those that's assumed. It feels like a, mm. a tack on to the end of some of these. Mm-hmm. Like you'll have these rich gospel passages or something like that, and thankfulness will be in there. And for whatever reason, it's one of those phrases that like my eyes just gloss uh, mm. like move on to the next section. I'm yeah. looking for something rich again. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like, it should be assumed. It's like, it's like, you know, thanks for all you done or whatever mm. that you yeah. put on the end of a letter. Yeah. It's like, it doesn't really mean a whole lot. It's just it's customary. Yeah. yeah. And so then when are we were talking about this yesterday, that all these things are be done with thankfulness in your hearts to God. I think it was Morgan who brought it up first that it like really clicked for me. It's like, Oh, this really lays out, Um, that all this is a response to the gospel. Like Mm -hmm. if we're thank, if we're coming from a place of thankfulness, that means we recognize what Christ has done Mm -hmm. in order to, um, allow his word to dwell in us richly, um, to make us part of his family. And so thankfulness implies it's not, it, it, he doesn't say do all these things with like, with striving, Mm -hmm. um, or with, you know, hope, hope that you'll make (laughs) it, you know, um, but it's thankfulness. Mm. You've, mm-hmm. you've been given it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's good. 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 <laughs> that's good. Uh, so the teaching and monitoring singing. So teaching uh, tends to be a little bit more just like instruction in general. Mm-hmm. Um, admonishing is teaching with a bite to mm. it. So it's got a corrective nature to it. Um, and then singing is uttering words in a melodic pattern. As Elf says, it's like talking, but moving your voice up and down. I'm really good at that. 
<laughs> Is smiling your favorite? Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I like to whisper too. Okay. Uh, whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Um, so here we've got this. This is kind of a summation of this section mm. of scripture um, or this this paragraph specifically. If you're looking at the whole thought is represented in the paragraph. So he's he's looking at everything about be kind, be, be humble, mm-hmm. forgive one another, bear with one another in love, uh, teach, admonish, and sing to one another. Um, and in all of that, whether it's the words that you're saying or the actions that you're taking, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So every activity is to be done in obedience to the Lord. And so, and it's supposed to be accompanied by giving mm-hmm. thanks to him through that, like mm-hmm. thanks to God, the father through Jesus. Yeah. Um, yeah. One of the, one of the things Michael kind of, kind of reworded to, to help again, English speakers trying to grab a hold of the Greek yeah. meanings and and wording themselves he he kind of he kind of tied it to the great commission where that go is as you go mm-hmm. like as you're going about life go make disciples uh this and this was kind of the same and as you're doing in word or deed mm-hmm. everything in the name of the lord mm-hmm. um that's good good like a, yeah like another one of those things like we don't have to put on this a suit to go do the thing it's just mm-hmm. as you're doing the thing yeah. That's how you do it. Yeah, because yeah. we are called to be an ambassadors of Jesus. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yes, ambassadorship. Mm-hmm. All right. Anything else? Sixteen and seventeen. Um, verse seventeen. So giving thanks to God the Father through Him. So Christ does not diminish the Father; He brings Him glory. Mm-hmm. Which I think is it's like you say it, and it's like feels kind of obvious at first, but then like the number of times I've heard, I've been in conversations where somebody's like, yeah, I don't really like the God of the old Testament. Like I like, I like Jesus. And, uh, you, you do see kind of, they've, so all three persons of the Trinity have been active, Mm -hmm. like always Mm -hmm. you do, you do see some kind of, uh, progressive revelation, even in the way God's chosen to act that in the old Testament, you do see, you do have a lot more interactions with the father than you have mm-hmm. in the gospels uh, with Jesus and then the pouring out of the Holy spirit. And then uh, the, the body of Christ empowered by the Holy spirit, uh, in the church. Mm. Well, so. also it makes me think of the subordination factor mm-hmm. that people have talked about. So mm-hmm. like, you know, God, the father is the first and then God, the son is the second and God, uh, God, the Holy Spirit is the third and it's mm-hmm. not ranking them. It's like, no, we were revealed to God, the father first. That's why he's mm-hmm. one. And then mm-hmm. second part of the Trinity is the spirit or the son, because we saw him second within mm-hmm. the scriptures and then third spirit. Yeah. So I remember having a conversation with you years ago, just trying to figure this out. Mm-hmm. And so it's a fun conversation how they're all equal. But what was your original question? Oh man. it well, was So within a complementary conversation, sometimes people will use, the subordination of the son. And so there's a, there's a like within complementarians, the complementarian camp, as far as saying that, like um, that, like there are specific roles that are um, designated for men versus uh, women in the church. And uh, complementarians believe that, you know, men and women are, are they're convicted. I'll, I'll say it that way. They're convinced that um, men uh, are, men and women are equal, but given different mm-hmm. roles, um, equal in value, distinct in roles. And, uh, one of the arguments is sometimes that we see this subordination um, in the way the son submits to the father. Um, and in- interestingly, so like Grudem and Piper fall into a camp that's called mm-hmm. the eternal functional subordination of the son saying that like Christ, so they abbreviate EFS, um, but that Christ has always been submitted to the father. Mm-hmm. And then there's actually been some pushback in recent years against that because it's like, that implies that in eternity past, that there were two wills mm-hmm. within God in order to be able hmm. to submit, then there has to be some kind of disagreement or it's not really submission. Right. Whoa. Yeah. So, uh, so that's ahead. what I brought to Nathan was, I was like, Whoa, I'm learning this thing and kind of learned it and taught this way, like through mm-hmm. Grudem and Piper. And then, so we just had a discussion about the, new way Mm -hmm. that I've kind of learned about it. So, yeah. 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 Pretty neat. So an argument to be made against the eternal functional subordination would be one, not to, not to wills in God. Mm -hmm. And so you do see that, um, you do see that in 
uh, in Jesus, the son of God incarnate, because now all of a sudden he has a human will and his, like, uh, his, the will of deity, you know, his, his divine will. And so in that instance, you do have submission, mm-hmm. but, um, and then the other reason for not making that argument would be that like, that's never the argument that scripture uses for complementarianism for like the way husbands and wives are to interact. It uses like the order of creation mm. um, that men were created first. And so it, it goes back to garden of Eden rather than trying to make a Trinitarian argument for mm-hmm. submission. Yeah. Hmm. Very cool. Thanks for that. <laughs> Side note. We need to put some timestamps in for that tangent. So that people can skip it. Yeah. No. <laughs> if they good. want. If they want. Nobody they want. would want to skip that. It's so good. It is. But we are getting ready to talk about wives and husbands. So it is kind of. Ah. It, it, li- it, li- it lines up. Do we want to go 18 to 21 or go in and throw in 22 as well? Let's do 18 through 21 Nine. and then 22 through 20 or Wait. through 4 1. Let's do that. Wives, submit to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. Yes. Yes. (laughs) It's good. (laughs) Good. 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 (laughs) Move on. What do you got? Um, So I think... I think it was you, Nathan, who said this yesterday, but I thought it was just good. I, and so it's adding the bond servants into it. But mm. this was special instructions for the members of the Christian household. And so how bond servants would have been within the household, it's mm. not excluding them out. Mm-hmm. And then so it starts with the closest relationship to the most distant relationship. So I thought that was neat as well. Yeah. Closest being like the, the wife to the husband. Since, mm-hmm. the, since all of the, so it's like, Wives and husbands, children and fathers, bondservants and masters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. 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 Anything uh, specifically about these? I think so. I think it's interesting that it always starts with the like the more vulnerable in the situation. So it starts with wives and then children, and then bondservants, mm. and it actually encourages them to be in a position that like that's actually kind of vulnerable. Uh, so wives submit. And one of the first questions we would ask is like, well, what if, you know, what if my husband takes advantage of that? Mm-hmm. Children, obey your parents. Well, what if my parents are like harsh? Um, bond servants, obey and everything. Well, what if he takes advantage of me and mm-hmm. doesn't pay me fairly? And in each case, um, it starts with um, do this because it's fitting in the Lord. Right. Mm-hmm. This is the way you honor Jesus. This is the way you do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus um, is by honoring his order in the mm-hmm. household. Mm-hmm. And then... He brings the hammer down on the person who isn't is in authority. He's like, acknowledging the fact that, like, hey, this could be taken advantage of. So don't you dare, mm. don't mm-hmm. you husbands, you better love your wives. Mm-hmm. Do not be harsh with them, fathers. You better not provoke your children, or they'll become discouraged. Mm. Don't you dare abuse this, this, um, this authority, this influence that you've been given mm. in this role. I, I just noticed this. So if I'm missing, if you guys point it out in something else, but. Wives like submitting to your husbands as fitting into the Lord. Children obey your parents for everything pleases the Lord. Bond servants for because of fearing the Lord, and then the working heartily as for the Lord. So just all of these are to the Lord, to the Lord, to the Lord. And where the husbands, his is like love your wife. Do not be harsh with him. Mm-hmm. Um, fathers, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. It's not because. Mm -hmm. of like fitting to the Lord or pleasing to the Lord. It's like, no, this is what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Like it's a command that's already given to them. Yeah, it is interesting. Um, You do have down that in four one, you have knowing that you have a master in heaven. So that one does like swap up that pattern a little bit. Maybe probably sums it up for the whole, because it's to that one person the whole entire time. Right. And then four one is actually the end of chapter three. What's, what's to that one person? Uh, so if we're looking at this as this is a letter given to the whole household. So this husband would be the father of these children. He would be the master of this bond servant. So his instruction is at the very end, knowing that you have a master in heaven. Ah. So ending it with that one thing instead of it to. So as the, okay. as the like leader in my house, he'd be looking at me and say, love your wife and don't be harsh with her. Don't provoke your children lest they become discouraged. Treat your bond servant justly and fairly, knowing that you have a master mm-hmm. in heaven. 
I got so you. if if that's if that would be basically the same audience, mm-hmm. the same person being spoken to, whereas the yeah. other is changing for each yeah each of them. I got that's you. That's neat. Cool. All right. Uh, pro- uh, verse twenty one. Fathers don't provoke your children. I didn't look, but that's the same word that we would go exasperate later on. I think. Or it, elsewhere. but interestingly, it is also like so the stir up one another to love and good works. Yeah. It's that That's same word. Same. Okay, so there's a okay. stirring, uh, stirring the pot, and it can be positive or negative. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But like trying so the, to get a rise out of them. Yeah. yeah, and we get the it would be provoke here because lest they become discouraged. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, and hopefully you do not, not. Yeah, hopefully you don't get discouraged by somebody spurring you on to right. love and good works. Yeah. Mm. Uh, anything else? Eighteen to twenty-one. Now you're going to repeat all your 22 stuff for 22 <laughs> on into the finish. Yeah. Bond servants obey in everything. Those who are your earthly masters, not by way of eye service as people pleasers, but with sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord, whatever you do work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord, you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ for the wrongdoer will be paid back for the wrong he has done. And there is no partiality. Masters, treat your bond servants justly and fairly, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Hmm. So there's seven times in Colossians three eighteen through four one, um, where in the Lord or another another equivalent term is actually used here. So how everything must be evaluated in the light of Christ and His teaching. Hmm. So just bringing that back of like Christ, the Word of Christ d- dwelling in you richly. So I think that's neat. And how bond servants um, at this time at, in Colossae, like this was very normal. Didn't you? Who's Where? Colossae. Do you want me to say Colossae? This is a third. Colossae. Colossae. No, Colossae is what you yeah. said earlier. That you, you're like, I say Colossae. I don't We're like, know we say what Colossae, I say anymore. And now you're like, Colossae? I don't know. <laughs> that one. <laughs> who knows? Just I think there are it. a variety of ways to say this, but Colossae is not one of them. You know, <laughs> it's been a long day, guys. I'm yeah. tired. So it's not oh. class I, class C, class, class. It's fine. Just whatever C-town. your heart. Colostrum. C-Town. Hmm. Anyways. C-Town. Okay, C-Town. I'll start calling it that. That works for me. I like it. Um, At this time, like, they had a lot of bond servants. Like, what did, it was like 10 to 40%. Yeah. Or something. Like, I mean, that's a huge range that we're saying, yeah. but... It- in it the was city very or in the empire. I think in Roman Empire. Yeah. Roman Empire. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is like very normal for them. This was not um a type of like it it was appealing to become a bond servant almost in the fact of like, okay, you're gonna feed my kids, mm-hmm. you're gonna help take care, like yeah. we're always yeah. gonna have food, we're gonna have shelter. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. it's different type of relationship that we normally put with the word bond servant. So yeah. pointing that out. Yeah. What else you got? Um, I think it's so I had I was reading this, I'm like, man, I thought that it used the word exasperate and stuff. And there's some things I'm like, this is phrased different than I remember. Mm. And I think there's actually like four different points in scripture, five different points where this this particular like wives submit like this pattern of wives and husbands, yeah. children and parents, right. uh, bond servants and masters is repeated. Um three of them are in Paul's letters, one of them is in uh, first or second Peter. Peter yeah. mm-hmm. Um and so with that, like, there's actually some, uh, some thought that like, this might've been a regular like saying in the churches of the time. It was at least a, um, there's at, at least a, uh, you know, consistent pattern in, in Paul's stuff that Peter shared, but mm. might've even been kind of part of their catechism of like, okay, so what are the rules of the, what, like, how do Christian households behave? Mm. Um, yeah. Wives submit and husbands love their wives, children obey, fathers don't provoke, Bond servants obey and um, masters don't abuse. Mm. Anyway, it's just kind of interesting. Yeah, that's cool. Um, you have a repetition in 23. So it's whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. It's very similar to up in 17. We had a question of like whether that's intended to apply to all of these or specifically mm-hmm. to bond servants because it's like right in the middle of the bond servant and master relationship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Same thing with 25. It's, it it kind of stands out to me for the wrongdoer will be repaid back for the wrong he has done and there mm-hmm. is no partiality. But I, so that one, it's like, I think you could take it to refer to all of them. Um, I also think it, 
it makes a ton of sense tying it to bond servants because they're like, they're kind of at the mercy of their master. Like, is he going to pay them what's just and fair or Mm. not? And they didn't have, you know, a lot of rights at that point in time. And so to entrust your life to the one who judges fairly and to know that like God will carry out justice allows you to submit um, and obey. Mm -hmm. Is that, is that doulos? That in verse 22 bond servant? I will check. Because Paul as introduces himself as a bond servant. Mm-hmm. So um we get we have this idea, this kind of um man, this kind of tent toward our vision of what a bond servant relationship would be because of our history in this country with slavery in general. And and it's it's hard to jump that hurdle of seeing clearly what in the New Testament it meant that master bond servant mm-hmm. relationship. Uh, because in our heads, we see chapter four, verse one, masters treat your bond servants justly and fairly. And knowing the history in this country where that did not happen. Right. Totally uh, different. Yeah. Where, yeah, if it ever, if it ever did happen, that was by far a, like a crazy scenario mm-hmm. compared to what it really was. But here in the Roman Empire during this time, yeah. that was a normal, natural part of life. To where being a bond servant wasn't, it, it wasn't in itself like a a, mm-hmm. a negative thing. Right. Mm-hmm. It was sometimes a respected pr- uh, profession, like you yeah. said. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, a bond servant of a master would would be regarded highly in mm-hmm. the in the community, in the area, in the region. Um, I'm thinking about. Did you watch Downton Abbey? Yes. I was in the room while Rachel and the girls watched it quite a bit. Okay. Wow. Well, so it'd be like being the butler of right. the house. He's exactly. like, whoa. You live in the house it's and you're serving the family and then you eat later and stuff. But like you're still like part of the family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. And in town, what was that guy's name? Their butler? Carson. Carson. Good yeah. Job. In town, Carson was like, I mean, he's the man. He's the butler at Downton yes. Abbey. Yeah. At right. Downton. At Downton. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But no, I didn't watch it at all. <laughs> but when, when Matthew <laughs> died... Spoilers. <laughs> yeah. It was the only I started enjoying the show and that one character on the show, and then he's not on the show I, anymore. I really liked Downton. It was good. That's so, all I got. Yeah. So watch Downton. <laughs> Amazon Prime. Moral of the story. What are you excited to hear, Stephanie? I don't remember what I said yesterday. We'll say something new today. I yeah. know. I'm gonna try. Do you need a second to think about it? Yep. I think it's because you didn't point at us at all during this episode. You're welcome. I mean, you're did you, so welcome. Did you have a talk with her about pointing? I did not. The <laughs> spirit must have <laughs> admonished. <laughs> but you pointed at me. I did point at you. Mm. Nathan, what are you excited to hear? I think so for me, um, I can really envision this 16 and 17, like being a part of it being a part of a church that is so like passionate about the gospel and the things that, that, um, that are taught in scripture, uh, by Jesus and about Jesus Mm -hmm. that we would, whenever we're together, whether it's for a weekend gathering or grabbing coffee or just bumping into each other, like we'd be so eager to share, Mm. to teach and monish. And, and then like when we're together on the weekend to sing loudly because Jesus is so good to us that mm-hmm. we can't keep it in. It's yeah. he's blessed us copiously. Yeah. He um, I think that's what, for me, it's like, I can catch a vision for that. And it just is like, I want to be a part of a church like that. Mm. Yeah. And those, um, those anxieties and those just parts mm-hmm. that ruin our weeks as we let the word of Christ dwell in us richly, mm-hmm. how those things get burnt away yeah. and uh and cleaned out and then we the ability to come free mm-hmm. uh and and thankful that we talked about and then just man just let the faucets on and mm-hmm. and worship just emerges like crazy that's awesome. um that, yeah that idea is one that is mind-boggling yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. for for it to happen to you plural yes mm-hmm. us all usins 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 um i so yeah thinking about this trying to bring back what i was thinking of yesterday but how teaching and admonishing can be done with spiritual songs as well like there 
like the songs that we sing here at our church and songs that we sing have weight to them mm. um, and how they can teach us and grow us just like firm foundation. Mm-hmm. Though That song is really rooted in Matthew 7. Mm. And so just, yeah, that, how mm. it teaches us. Yeah. Ooh, one of the things we did mention yesterday about the spiritual songs part is how, how it could be just like an in the moment. Spontaneous. Yeah. And almost like, you know, not that. So the gift of tongues mm-hmm. being those, those heavenly, uh, that heavenly language that just comes mm-hmm. through, like the spirit speaks, mm-hmm. uh, and where that idea could be not necessarily like the, the sounds of the tongues, but just the song could just mm-hmm. pipe through. Yeah. And that idea of something like that happening in our lives, because we've, just let the word of Christ dwell in us. Yeah. Uh, that is a little bit scary of a thought if yeah, we're right. kind of intimidated by that idea. Mm-hmm. But then the idea of just having a song just pop into our heart that we don't know that nobody had ever taught us, but it just, just, mm-hmm. hmm, just out of nowhere, the spirit just <laughs> puts a song in our heart. Um, that e- even that idea is one in which, um, man, I'm kind of, kind of excited about. Mm-hmm. Yay. <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> Good. That's all? Good. Did we do it? I think we did it. Oh, man. Well, thanks, guys. Uh, yeah, If you just find yourself popping into spontaneous worship, hey, record it and send it in. No? I, I mean, mean that's, that's fine. If that's, they want to. If it's to, spontaneous, how are they going to record it? <laughs> right. Well, they should always have their phone ready to go. Okay. Okay. Please have your phone always ready to go. In case uh, that happens. Yeah. Yeah, it's always a pleasure, guys. Thank you. We'll see you on the next episode. And until then, Warehouse is closed. On the flippity flop. See you on the flippity flop. <laughs>